Okay, we'll call the uh, meeting of uh, January 4th of the Bennington School Board order. First item on the agenda is citizens' comments. Any comments by citizens? Yes. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jennifer Parker. I'm the librarian here at Bennington Elementary. My husband and I are residents of Bennington. He a long, lifelong resident and a 1976 graduate of Mount Anthony. I under, have been attending the meetings in recent months, starting with the recent labor dispute and the unpleasantness that happened, but mainly because there were a few things said at the last meeting that I thought about for weeks and weeks and weeks and I wanted to just say someone said at the last meeting how the last few years you have been um, fiscally responsible you have done the correct thing you've kept budgets very low you have not wanted to burden the community with unnecessary expenditures um, School board member Sleeman um, pointed out that uh, after Jim Law made a very uh, nice statement about how there were space issues and other issues with the facilities of the district that perhaps they hadn't been maintained in the way in which they could have been because we were fiscally responsible. Buildings should last for years and years and years. And as the librarian and uh, specials teachers are often on that uh, cutting board every year um, and my job whatever it is worth or isn't worth um, it's business it, it doesn't matter to me what happens to my job what does matter to me is the materials with which our students are given in the library and I brought a couple of examples 80% of my collection probably looks like this I'm holding two very wonderful novels both award winners, both been turned into Hollywood movies. Nobody wants to read a book that looks like this. I, they don't want to. It looks like something their long dead great grandfather, you know, they, they're not interested in this. What they're interested in is this. Also, very popular novels, but they're flashy and slick and nice. And I want you to, as you go into your budget deciding season, realize that each year I lose more books to loss and damage than I'm able to replace. I just wanted to say that. And I wasn't able to come to the red meeting the other night where you were talking about your options for things to do. I know that you're supposed to be building community and making connections with other people. And as part of the red, I was hoping that you would find capacity in other school districts. It's been printed in the paper that um, schools are concerned about their declining enrollment and their ability to continue to maintain their elementary schools. That leads me to believe that they have capacity of which the principal's last uh, meeting indicated that they need because their teachers are teaching in tiny little areas, um, non-private areas. And so I was hoping that out of the red discussion that you would um, somehow find it possible that you don't have to, as Mr. Pembroke pointed out at the last meeting, do a multi-million dollar bond to make your buildings bigger. Because if other people in the area have capacity in their schools, there should be a way for everyone to share their resources so that nobody has to feel that financial pinch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none. Uh, we have the treasurer's report <coughs> online for January. Rick has the uh, budget status report for December. If there's any questions, that's also online. Can we have a motion to accept the treasurer's report? So moved. A second. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, unanimous. 
Okay, now C, uh, fiscal year 13 budget discussion, continued work. Uh, <clears throat> last night, only three of us were able to come to the meeting, myself, uh, Jackie, and uh, <coughs> Laurie, and uh, we were given a discussion by the three principals of what their needs are. Each one has one major need, basically, in each building, and they mentioned that wasn't their only need, but that was their most important need at the time. <clears throat> and then uh, we had some information from Ms. Marcou, and then we had some update on the early education information, and uh, Rick gave us some information from the state. Jerry Prue gave us a request for one, maybe two trucks, whatever uh, could be fit into the budget. And then Rick hit us with a, and again, this is before he gets all the revenue number, nine and a half to 10% increase in the budget. And that's where we were left off yesterday. I think Lori's gonna try and give you an update of what the three principles uh, we're and, looking for. And, and actually, this is a this is a breakdown of where <coughs> the growth in the budget is originating in the various lines. So you'll see um, there's a growth. I'll wait until everyone gets a copy of it. So again, these are these are preliminary numbers. Um, it's a, it represents uh, just under nine and a half percent. The um, as you can see that the listing of the items, um, there's approximately a thirty-four thousand dollar increase in our SBSU assessment. I know for some of you who saw the SBSU assessment, it looked larger than that, but because of some shifting yeah. of of um, expenditures, it's actually that that would be. Yeah. the net growth in our in our Senate. assessment um, the technology we actually heard last night um, about some plans to do some um, replacement for technology at the fourth and fifth grade levels recycle some of the network netbooks that we had invested in previously and bring them down to the lower grades and so there is a, an investment in additional technology um, we have some funding changes we have several positions that have been are federally funded that will have to come into our budget. Um, the new um, kindergarten teacher or the second kindergarten teacher was at Monument was funded with federal dollars. Um, that will have to come off. That's kind of, you know, it's a, a bridge, a transition to use those dollars for, but not for permanent, um, permanent placement. And there are some para positions as well that will be brought over to our budget. So that is um, what you see under the funding changes, which is approximately 1.62%. Um, we have our preschool, as we've been talking over the last half a year, about our, um, our desire to see a public pre-K option and um, better preparedness and readiness for our, our pre-K children and their, and their entry into kindergarten. Um, we, are, we are putting money in the budget um, to continue to support that activity, and, the, and the Karen gave us some information yesterday. Um, about that, um, we have uh, we have some facilities needs. We have a new position. Um, there is a bubble in a classroom um, at Molly Stark um, in the second, second grade, grade going into uh, first, grade, first grade, grade going into second, into second mm -hmm. uh, which will require to keep the class sizes um, low at those at those um, early primary eight uh, grades. Um, there's going to be a need for an additional teacher over there to keep those numbers manageable. Um, and then, of course, we have um, the, the salary and benefit increases that are um, built into um, and are a result of the contract negotiations um, and some other inflationary, other inflationary increases um, that I think, as Rick put it, before we get out of bed, <laughs> we have uh, a 5% growth in our budget just based upon uh, the <coughs> contract and the inflationary costs associated with health insurance and oil and utilities. So that's where the numbers are. What we don't have right now is, um, that's the revenue side. We don't have, no, that's, that's the spending side. We side. don't have the revenue side. So we don't know how much of this will be, um, actually need to be supported with, with our local tax dollars. And that is something that remains a mystery based upon inconsistent guidance or um, lack of firm guidance out of the state. And also what, what creativity we might have in funding um, some of this through, um, through other sources that are local dollars. That's where we're at, generally. Um, we need to set up 
some additional budget meetings. We had attempted to do that last night, but it didn't make any sense with only three of us there. Um, we need to warn the budget by Wednesday, the 25th of January, which means that we need to get in at least two budget sessions before the 25th of January so that we can um, really refine uh, this plan and be ready to warn by then. And, and one of the good news is, uh, <coughs> is that uh, your equalized pupils are up. So that, that will help the tax rate. Um, I can't tell you today to what effect, but that is a trend that's going in the right direction um, <clears throat> for you. And I'm trying to log on. You said 18, right? Oh. You went up 18, yeah. And um, so that'll help. Uh, and the uh, uh, preschool, the, the logic with the preschool is, um, you know, with the, the grant, that we'll apply for um, is the theory is the grant, and it's proven to be the case in North Bennington and Shaftesbury that um, the grant subsidizes, so it's cost neutral from a tax rate standpoint. Even though it shows an increase of $100,000 in your budget, by the equalized pupils those preschool kids give you, is the, the net effect on the tax rate is. Um, is negligible and in those two districts help me Karen I think we've been doing Shaftesbury three years in North Bennington two now actually um, Shaftesbury is four four and three mm -hmm. no four, uh, and two. four and four two. two you know it's it's fractions of a sense on either side of zero but as, if you look at it it's relatively cost neutral so. because we get additional equalized you grow your pupils. equalized pupils by those yeah Also, you said the common level of appraisal CLA was up a percent or two as well. The CLA is up a little bit. Um, you know, that's not going to hurt you. That's going to help you. Um, I'm hoping, you know, we have in here uh, right now our, our health and dental uh, benefits are at the high range that the insurance company has given us. I expect to see that final number this week. I'm hoping it's going to be a little less, so that'll help you a little bit. Um, We'll work on um, being creative in some of the uh, uh, pieces of equipment that we need to purchase for the facilities to maintain the facilities to try to lower those costs. And, um, and I, I, I'm confident that it'll only get better from here. It's not going to get any worse. And uh, you know, we do need to get some direction from the board, um, to schedule some meetings to figure out where you want to go. Did you put, just a question, did you put both trucks in here for mm -hmm. and, and to the point, uh, if that was made by uh, the, the librarian from Bennington Elementary School, um, who started our meeting with her public comments, I mean, we have, no one on the board needs to be reminded, we have been um, fiscally conservative. Um, that's not necessarily fiscally responsible all the time, but it's we we have been fiscally conservative because we have had the reality, uh, and and I think at some point we are now in our fourth year. I mean, we had three really tight and no, you know, very minimal minimal growth, if no growth, and at some point we are going to we're going to just have to um, make the investments um, that we have delayed, um, whether it's. It's trucks that are 10 or 12 years old that at some point, you know, aren't worth making any more investments in for repairs or our buildings or, you know, technology or staff. So we, um, we're, we're kind of at that crossroads right now. And hopefully the numbers will get better. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right, right. Told you, You're a mag that. magician. I just we told know. You I'd make him better. We've got to get it down to nine four. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's not the spending. It's it's the revenue we need. Yeah. It's, it's the revenue. Well, just find the revenue. We, oh, it's sure. not the spending. We well, have to spend. I mean, I, I you know. I'll start baking brownies. Okay. <laughs> it's the revenue. Well, we won't get any money there. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Wendy does it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Rick was looking <clears throat> for some direction as to dates. He'd like to lock in some dates because <clears throat> he's meeting multiple times with each board. So it's six boards, three times is 18 meetings. He's got scheduled this month. So. I would like to schedule you guys for Wednesdays at <clears throat> 7 o'clock. Tuesdays and Thursdays are off limits because I work. I can do Wednesdays. Wednesdays are fine. So I can't guarantee anything. Next Wednesday can and the 18th. No. I can't make next Wednesday because of the VSBA, but I can come in in the early afternoon or morning and talk with you about what you're proposing and give you my ideas. With it. But I'll make the next two after that. You make it, George? I, I don't know what on the schedule here. I'm not sure. Let's. Uh, why does it have to be Wednesday at 7 o'clock? Can't I mean, are there other times that might be I'm more convenient for the rest the of the board? No, no. Is Wednesday is evening no. the best? When, yeah, evenings All are right. the best for me, and Wednesdays well, right now this month the are going to be the best. Let's let's go from there. Let's see how many can make it for that, and then we'll see if we can do some adjusting. Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday. Jackie, you said you weren't 100% sure, right? Depends on it's your 11th and 18th. It's the 11th and 18th 11th. are the choices, and the 25th. And the 25th. 25. And we have to have it in before the 25th, so we need the 11th and 18th. You only need one visit or two? Wednesday means next Wednesday. Yes. yes. 11, 11 o'clock in the central office. 11, 18, and 25 is what we propose. Next three. We can, I can do a central office. I can visit there because there's you have all of them. There's more convenient yeah. there for me. Yeah. Presentation, right? And you'll be following the policy committee. Um, but they should be out of there. They're very prompt at 6.30. Okay, so we'll meet there. <clears throat> where, where? Why do we still do policy? Central office, 7 o'clock. When, when the VSBA 11th? makes them. What? what? Why do we still do policies when VSBA I never knew that. I, I don't understand why, but... Well, we're using their policies, but I'll bring that comment to the committee. Well, well I know the, what they'll say. Uh, the VSBA <laughs> now has... 11th, 18th, and 25th, all three? Yeah. Yes, I know. Staff. Yeah. The young lady's yeah. on staff there, and uh, you know she goes over everything and uh, yep. <clears throat> everything. Every policy they send down to the local school districts has been checked over by mm -hmm. legal counsel. So I mean, I, I think yeah. we'll, we'll check it I that. think there are a few people who love to serve on <clears throat> policy committees. There are. I don't know. There are, yeah. Yeah. It is That's your, <laughs> one of your most important roles as board members. That's right. So, no, so. All right, so, okay, we're so all we set, set it for the 11th, 11, 18th, 18 and 25th, 7 o'clock, central office, so we'll try to book those in. If you can't make any of those meetings, it'd be nice to uh, at least call in and let Mary Lee know. And if you do want an update about what's going to be discussed, you may be free during the day, you can call Rick or stop in, and uh, I'm sure you can spend 15 minutes just going over what the uh, important stuff for that evening is, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, number three. Act 26 VCPC Preschool Partnership Plan. Karen? I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, <clears throat> before I do that piece, I wanted to let you know um, that unfortunately Vermont was not one of the uh, winners of the uh, Race to the Top Early um, Learning Grant. So um, the states that did get awards were California, Delaware, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, North Carolina, Ohio, Rhode Island, and Washington. And um, they haven't revealed publicly yet, at least I haven't seen it, um, where we did rank um, in the process of um, grading. What I do know is that Vermont um, found the process of writing the grant to be very, very helpful. And the Agency of Human Services and the Department of Education are having ongoing conversation about how they can move forward um, despite the fact that we didn't get additional money. But they did glean um, a lot of information that will help improve practices for young children and the coordination between the organizations. So more information will be coming. Um, there is some speculation that there might be another round. Um, so, um, but we don't know. I, I looked up online before I came to see if a decision had been made and I didn't find anything. Um, um, that a decision had been made about another round yet. So that was a little disappointing because um, it would have been, you know, $50 million um, coming in to the state and um, I was hoping that we would be able to um, become a pilot um, as part of that grant. But we'll see what the future brings. Um, 
And as far as the um, preschool work that we're doing, um, uh, we've been working very hard, the work continues, and we'll be bringing a proposal to you of, uh, uh, about what we'd like to be doing for public pre-K. Um, the board needs to consider it. Um, please remember that the pr uh, motion that you um, supported was to explore. You didn't make a decision to do. So I'm um, preparing a proposal to bring to you to review it and to make a decision about whether we're moving forward or not. So the money that's currently in the budget um, that you saw tonight is an estimate about um, our best estimate about what we feel we'll need to support the project if it was going to go forward. So stay when, tuned. When will you be bringing this? Either the 11th or the 18th, and I was hoping it could be the 18th because I'm not meeting with my team until sa uh, Sunday, and it gives a short amount of time to be able to pull it together. So That 100000 is a matching sort of amount, right? Um, maybe. Oh, yeah. You know, they were just mentioning on the side that they weren't here yesterday. It seems like a low amount. Yeah, we'll, we'll, like have a low number. Number. we'll have more conversation. We'll have more conversation about it. About Karen, can I just say thank you for your time and efforts in writing that grant? I know it took a lot of time. Oh. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank You're you. Welcome. And thank you for all the updates, keeping us informed. You know. <clears throat> Any questions of Karen? Nope. Okay. Uh, new business. Any new business. Seeing none, uh, the consent agenda. The minutes, warrants, and basically nothing else. Can we have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes or the uh, warrants? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay, <coughs> okay committee reports. Uh, the Red Committee Act 153 first, and then food service. So this is my third board meeting this week. <laughs> because the Red Thank Committee you. met yet on Monday. We did a budget meeting last night, and here we are again. So the Red Committee actually, I thought, was a very productive meeting on Monday. Um, we had, I think I had reported on our prior meeting that um, the various districts were asked to kind of put their cards on the table as to, you know, um, whether they thought they, they wanted to be in and what it meant in terms of giving up their local board or whether they weren't in. And um, as a result, there were various scenarios that had been kicked around in the prior meeting. And so at this meeting on Monday, those scenarios were kind of presented to us with ju just for discussion. Nobody's making any commitments. Nobody's making any, um, no, there's no horse trading going on yet, anything like that. But there were various scenarios that were set, up, set out. Um, and we went through the exercise of taking each scenario, which involved the first one was everybody throws their hat into the ring, and we create one regional educational district. Mm -hmm. And when I say everyone, it, you know, it's it is everyone that makes up the SVSU as well as um, Arlington, the Sandgate. Arlington Sandgate. And um, we went through pros and cons of each, and. That was, um, there were nine different scenarios that were kind of laid out, um, including the creation of more than one red, uh, potentially two reds, um, and uh, you would have to each, would, there would still need to be a supervisory union, um, how the reds would be represented in that supervisory union, how they might be, how the various districts might be aligned. Um, the next meeting is scheduled for early February. Uh, the group as an exercise, asked the consultants to come back. We took, we took two scenarios and merged them together. The two scenarios were the creation of a panel Bennington Arlington red and a red made up of the other four districts, North Bennington, Shaftesbury, Woodford, and Sandgate. Sandgate. Um, and then what those two, how those two reds would interact um, under a single SU, um, which would eliminate the SU that's, that's up in Arlington, or you create a new one. It's not the elimination of one, but a creation, or elimination of one, but the creation of a new one and elimination of two. And then what 
the, the rules would be with regard to those respective REVs. Um, <coughs> the benefits that were identified in Bennington, Pownall, and Arlington aligning themselves in a single regional educational district were um, increased opportunities at the secondary level um, by having two high schools in the district, um, two different, very different high schools in terms of choice, um, which would be for Arlington attractive to potentially come down and have a, uh, the Mount Anthony, um, the, 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 the bigger school, the larger um, uh, choice of, of coursework but also that the you know, Bennington would as well benefit from a small high school choice, which might be very attractive to um, certain, certain families, certain students, because it is smaller. Um, we talked about the opportunities um, with Pownall, um, being able to share resources to put to, um, to be better use our middle school with our students, and how that would because their sixth graders are not in the middle school right now, how that would change um, their, their opportunities and increased um, uh, edu educational opportunities for their students, perhaps <coughs> more opportunities for um, magnet schools or, or um, other schools because we'd have multiple campuses. Um, the other red, be very honest, um, when you look at Sandgate and you look at what North Bennington is doing, um, their priority is choice at the secondary level. And if they come into a red, Sandgate has universal choice right now. Yeah. I mean, they have no building. Um, and so, you know, they're interested in preserving that. North Bennington is interested in going in that direction. Um, Woodford does not want to give up its local, its local board. Um, it, it values its school, and it doesn't want to be um, gobbled up. And Shaftesbury is kind of sitting out there on the fence. Um, they would, Shaftesbury, for them to create a red, you'd need four districts because they don't have the student count. So we, for the exercise, we've put Shaftesbury into that, into that second red, and then we'll have a conversation. Again, this is an exercise in kind of seeing what it would look like. There are absolutely, positively no, uh, forget commitments, there's no even um, expression of this is what anybody sitting around the table thinks works, makes sense, it's really to, it's to go through the exercise. Um, there was discussion about the fact that um, there need to be broad board support for any initiative for, from each of the boards, even though we're not there as, as um, spokespersons for our individual mm -hmm. boards. But that would, you know, it would be just natural to have to expect um, kind of that broad support and, and, um, and then ultimately the opportunities to sell any any restructuring to the, the community and explain what the benefits are. We've been trying desperately not to focus on the dollars. The dollars creep into the conversations all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think ultimately we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to run the numbers, so to speak, to see what the financial implications are. But mostly it's been around what are the opportunities that are available from reducing the, um, the the professional drain on staffing and supporting multiple boards, multiple districts, what are, whether that's at the superintendent level or, or the, the team within central office, um, as well as being able to, to share resources like we don't today because we have district lines. Um, so that, that is our, our next task. Um, I have a question. Lori, um, and I don't know the answer, but in I've run these committees before. Um, is there any way that when, yeah, you know, if, say you did do the red with Arlington and them, that that board that runs that red, would that be a supervisory board or would you have another board on top? It, the way it, was been, it, it, it has been discussed is that um, it could be a supervisory district, but the if we were if we were all in <coughs> the fact that you have four districts three of which are already part of the SVSU mm -hmm. wouldn't potentially join the red mm -hmm. you'd still need an SU now the question would be and this the consultants opined as to whether um, the, the education department or the commissioner would favor a creation of, say, a supervisory district 
of Bennington, Arlington, and Pownall, and then a supervisory union that had all of these small, these small um, entities. Yeah. Um, because there, I mean, now there would still be a net. It would be if if the Arlington supervisory union. And the and the SU were together here. I mean, there's not a there's not a net growth in the number of SUs. You are. But you haven't necessarily, probably achieved the consolidation yeah. that would otherwise. So one of the one of the things that they're going to tease out, and the consultant talked about, was that if the two reds were created and you put an SU over them, that um, you could and and they'll walk us through this. You could consistent with the current law, change the representation at your SU so that it's not three from each red, It'd be, each from three, e yeah. three from each district, but rather it would be um, either you could change your, you could wait, you could wait well, the. Well, when you're, um, when you, this is just a thought, when you're um, discussing this, so, um, ask them if there's a way that the, whatever, it ends up to be if the budget for the red can be voted on at large um like we can't vote on the su budget the public you mean yeah um and that's where i think <coughs> the biggest pro um i don't have a problem with the way we're set up it, i think it works but a lot of the public um sometimes they have a problem with it because they can't vote on an su budget it, it would be a lot much more, it would be me, much more consolidated though, because if you had two reds, right, that had yeah. just say nine members yeah. each, right. and then you had one supervisory, and if you said the supervisory was going to be made up of five, mm -hmm. um, and three came from the red with the larger population, and two came from the red that had the lesser population, mm -hmm. or you, even you said it was, it was equal, it was going to be three and three. But a budget would have to require a supermajority, which means that the ones with the small amount of fiscal implications can't drive, because I know Bennington has always felt concerned that it pays 70% of the bill, and so everybody else sits around the table, and it, it, it's very easy to raise your hand when the implication for your budget is so small. I think that, and that has been expressed, that is clearly something that can be addressed in a governance structure for a newly created SU, which would either change the representation or change the voting um, requirements for certain decisions like yeah. budgets. It was just something I wanted you. To but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure that there's a way to get that budget out to the to the um, public. But yeah. then you have a much more. You don't have seven different boards that are driving that budget. You've got. You've got. If you could Two. get to a situation, you'd have. You'd have two, and instead of ten or eleven school board meetings a month between the two supervisory unions, you'd be three. You'd be at a much. You'd be at yeah. a, a, just at a different, just a different dynamic completely. Would Arlington keep their K twelve? Just that we could send people here, and they would send people here. Uh, well, we talked about choice within the districts too. So one of the questions within the within the red. So the you know one of the questions would be whether um, I think they have capacity in their elementary school, and in their in their so so to the extent that there were, um, you know uh, I mean I think the question of choice or the the. Um, the attractiveness of choice was something that was put down as a as a pro in um, creating a, an alliance or creating a, a we called it the corridor or red uh, from Powell Bennington to to Arlington that you you create many more opportunities regionally um, for our students as well as theirs. Another <clears throat> question there you had mentioned honestly that you know Whitford wants nothing to do Sandgate and probably North Bennington but that was three of the four. If they went their own, would Shakespeare be able to buy service? If, if well, at, at, from no, <coughs> have their own board, but buy the financial and direction for spend and all that well, from the Bennington one. That that was a that was a conversation and a question that was had. Um, the reality is the, that what's very unattractive about that is if they don't form their own red, then you have four additional school board meetings. You have an SU that has to sit over them. Some SU, whether it's us because we create a supervisory district or not. Um, and so the, the professional drain 
and there is. There's no way to, I mean, there's no other way to describe it. There is a gigantic professional drain that comes from um, our consultant is a former superintendent who said, you know what, I've done that. I've been there. I spend, I'm, a, I'm a professional and I'm spending how much of my time developing agendas and doing follow-up after a board meeting and, and that I never get to be the educational leader I want to be um, with my team. And my team is doing the same running around for the 7, 9, 12, board, whatever it may be. And that the, the, if we're going to get there, we have to acknowledge that it's not just the dollars in central office, but are the dollars even giving us what we need or want in terms of the support for the principals and the building administrators and the teachers? I, I, it's, it's inconceivable that they can do that. They it's can. inconceivable that they can do that well, or as well as could be done if if you had that, that streamlining in place. So yes, they could buy it, but if, if Rick or whatever the task is has to be done repeatedly, like, like how many board meetings in the next month to get budgets together? Every night, yeah. 25. So if you have to do, if you still have to do that, yes, we could sell them the services, but I'm not sure that that, that really achieves the um, efficiencies Ultimately. Another question, since they're going to be so small, like Whitford with three, four teachers, is it legal in Vermont, like they do in Massachusetts, to have a superintendent slash principal? And that one person could be the principal and the, and the superintendent of the district? <coughs> and uh, well, I mean, would, in one building, you could. But they're not thinking of talking, they're not creating a district. I mean, could they do their own like that? I mean, no, I mean, the red, the red, the, well, the rules on the red are you've got to have student count. Or you've got to be linking arms with three is, other districts. This is to get the money and all this other fancy stuff from the state. But what if they just decided that they wanted to form their own little district and have a superintendent, principal running their school, and they have the three teachers? I think they could, they could petition. They still have to belong to an SU. The state keeps saying well, you want to be creative. And yeah, well, I think but creativity is not to create smaller well, units. Wait a minute. It's the CDC and a supervisory union? Yeah, they are, they are a supervisory district. District. But they're their own district. Yeah, that's what I was to say. They're principal superintendent slash right. whatever. Uh, you uh, know. I mean, they could I mean, I don't think anything nice petitions or pre prevents <laughs> an, a, a school or to try to petition for that recognition. I don't think certainly what we've been told by the consultant and what others have read about the the goals of Act 153 that that's consistent with it. Um, and I and I don't think and and Woodford to be very clear there they very much have spoken positively about their relationship with BSD oh, yeah. and that they want and that they very much want that to continue but their fear is um, very much loss of their local control and their and their school and um, that the assurances that may or may not be available in any kind of governance document um, may not be enough to actually overcome the, the concern about losing their school. So, and, and Sandgate is, you know, I put them in that same boat, and we all have read where North Bennington's headed, so the, you know, that's, that train is, you know, leaving the station. Where it ends up, we don't know yet, but, um, so it kind of makes, potentially makes sense for um, at least the three of them, and I think Shaftesbury's just saying, well, listen, we'll, we want to see, we, I think their representatives like we'd like to see these options teased out a little bit more, um, and and better understand what the implications are, and then get you know ultimately if we get further along to to try to put more meat around it. So that's that's what's going on with Act 153. Well, thank you for the quality and detailed report. You're welcome. Any other questions or anybody have any questions? More? Thank you again. Very, Very good. good. Okay, food service advisory committee. I think that's Claude. That's Claude, right? Well, yeah. You have a report on the food service advisory. <laughs> food service. Uh, that's, when did I get that? I, I've only been going, I've only been away for two weeks. <laughs> you were out of Wait, 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 I didn't miss a meeting. <laughs> Technology. Okay. I'm on the That's up to Mr. Okay. Checking to see if I'm awake. Okay, uh, seven. Superintendent's report SBSU leadership team. Mary D. Ward. 
I just wanted to make um, a comment or let you all know that Stephen Dale, who's the executive director of the Vermont School Boards Association, is planning to come to the SDSU meeting on the 19th to carry on the conversation that was started there on veteran communication, <coughs> looking at board goals, looking at SDSU board goals. So we're looking forward to that. I think the meeting um, in which the principals and the uh, SVSU leadership team participated in uh, the uh, earlier December meeting was very productive. There was a lot of uh, good uh, discussion about communication and, and trust and, and really improving the communications within uh, the SVSU at all levels between all districts. So I'm looking forward to that and I know we'll keep you posted. Um, Okay. Which inspires that. Just come to quickly. He is, he is interested in coming in. Yeah, it doesn't only have to be SVSU members, right? No. All the boards are invited. Yeah. All members. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> what, is, what time is that meeting? We haven't set it yet, but I imagine it'll be, um, it may be earlier because of his travel. But you'll send something yes. out to everybody. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We're actually going to finish up the planning. We've started the planning for it. have to finish up that for the agenda to come out next week. Okay, uh, personnel, nothing. Policies, nothing. Uh, I have no report on the chair. Others, uh, task review? Karen Bernal will bring a proposal for public pre K to the board um, on the 18th of January. That's it? That's it. Okay. <laughs> do we need an executive session this evening? Just yes. to do it. Very okay. Nothing else? Uh, yeah. Anybody have anything else to bring up? <clears throat> okay, seeing none, can we have a motion to go on executive session? So moved. Second. Uh, part of the executive session for contract, correct? Yeah. Yes. Contracting and, pers pers contracting and personnel and a student matter. All in favor? Unanimous. Mm -hmm. What time is that?